Primo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The vegetable garden on the roof of the Kotze Street Shelter in Bromfontein is part of a pilot project series of urban gardens to improve food security for the more vulnerable people in the city. Skulk Burger has a story. The Kotze Street rooftop garden next to Constitution Hill in Johannesburg is an initiative that aims to leverage micro-scale farming cooperatives to produce food for the inner city. The garden is a hydroponic system and produces vegetables in trays, but limited to vegetables that grow up, like spinach, rape, cabbage, morojo, basil, dill, cauliflower, broccoli and lettuce, according to the project leader Catherine Kambule. The technology and the cooperative model are being evaluated as part of this pilot project, which the city of Johannesburg is using to refine its future plans. The city's Food Resilience Unit said that the city would open two more hydroponic rooftop vegetable gardens during this year. They will be built on the roofs of inner city buildings renovated by the Johannesburg Social Housing Company for low-cost housing. While the hydroponic technology requires that participants can read and write in English to access the training and support materials, the vegetables grow faster than in soils. For example, 4 to 9 kilograms of spinach can be harvested per square meter every few weeks. The garden provides a local restaurant with 40 kilograms of spinach a week and the surplus is sold to locals. The garden also donates the produce that cannot sell to the shelter. The rooftop garden consists of 26 growing tunnels and two incubation tunnels. The project recycles more than 90% of the water and only adds calcium and some amino acid nutrients to the water. One of the challenges is that destitute people have become used to receiving food parcels and are often not interested in growing the food themselves. However, the project does provide each participant with training and a way to generate some income for their families. Kotze Street project leader Catherine Kambule explains the benefits of these small urban food gardens. It's a very good thing because it's benefiting the community in terms of elevating poverty, creating jobs, contributing to the economy and greening the city. You know, we want to green the city, we want the city to be beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, in agriculture, it's undying business. What is uh, motivating uh, the community from supporting these gardens? In the first place, it's near, it's around, and they are sure that they are getting fresh vegetables. Because when they come to buy, it's when we harvest for them. It's not like something we'll harvest three days, four days, and take it somewhere. It's fresh from the garden. We harvest the same time when we want it, and it's nearer which is saving them time and transport money. Engineering News then asked her about the feedback and support the garden receives from mothers in the area. And she emphasized the role that women can play in these initiatives and the benefits that mothers gain for their families from their involvement. They like it so much because, you you know, most of women, they are not that much educated. And in, in a... And it's not nobody. It's born in inner city. We are all from different uh, uh, places, and we we are staying in buildings here. There is no land where you can plant. Mm. And mothers, they like to, they like gardens. They like to have gardens. Mm. They like uh, to have. Also, they like if they can be involved in such projects. That's why I'm encouraging the city to enlarge the project so that there are so many women that they will benefit. There's grannies that they are looking after the grandchildren. You have children that they're going to school. And most of women, we are single, single mothers. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm motivating them according to my own experience, what, how, how this garden has changed my life and what I'm experiencing as I'm going through it. You know, practice make make perfect. When they are still telling you, you don't have that picture, but when you start to be involved, now you you see the bright future and where we are going. Other news making headlines this week, MTN optimistic of turnaround after plunging into the red. MTN believes it is on the mend and is seeing the first signs of a turnaround after plunging into the red during what it described as the most challenging year in the company's 22-year history. I should say that uh, there is absolutely no question that MTN uh, has gone through a very difficult period in the last 12 months, Um, really commencing um, to some extent with the fine uh, in Nigeria in, in, in 2015, which of course cascaded into 2016. Uh, and since then, there have been 
quite a number of other unforeseen macro challenges, uh, not least the huge devaluation of the, of the Naira. We finally settled on the fine mid-June uh, 16, uh, and that enabled us to refocus uh, our attention to very much operational matters, because as I said, uh, the fine cast a pretty long shadow over many key aspects of the operation. We put in place a transformative project called Project Ignite to hit the reset button on a number of operational and strategic matters. Um, we also put together a, an operating structure which was there previously of instilling a second layer between uh, the group and the various countries at regional level. And we think that has given us a much higher degree of focus uh, and supervision. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.